Hello, Kubernetes steering. Hey! Good to see ya. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> that's how, like, that's how much I've gotten out of the house, number one. Uh, <laughs> but number two, I'm just like, so excited to get started on something that I've been putting off for this group in particular. So it's like one of those, like I got my new shovel out and I'm ready to, ready to dig that first. <laughs> dig it. This is awesome. I finally have time after like all summer, so. I'd say I feel bad, but I don't. <laughs> I would just love to be able to leave the house. Right? I'm eating my lunch right now, by the way. I'm sorry. Oh. This is the year of not apologizing anymore. <laughs> I'm just so hungry and like I am, I just have the worst habits ever. Boop. That's right, we're recording. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. I'm not like at home with my friends right now. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. I know. With friends. I'm so sorry to people that watch this. They're like, what? Welcome to our home, everyone. <laughs> Who is watching this? That's what I want to know. Right? <laughs> You're watching this? You know engage with us yeah come join us next week not even like we also have a slack channel you can hang out with us in now the only the only one watching us is some interns machine learning algorithm <laughs> where they're trying to like analyze something about people by crunching old meetings on youtube so are we like a mechanical turk like training yeah. data right now <laughs> Well, I'm waiting for them to come up with a bot that attends meetings for you. I'll get so much more done. No. All right, I do that for internal meetings, sure. But I like my <laughs> internal meetings. That's why I do open source. Yeah. <laughs> so I can see my friends, even though I don't work at the same company. Um, so for the agenda, like... <sighs> I didn't want to like guilt trip people and like dig through what people said they were working on two months ago or whatever. I'd rather talk about if people have the spoons or forks or cutlery to work on something now and it's okay to say no and what that is. Um, like I had time today, which was really exciting to finally open that PR. So I was super pumped. Um, and if other people have things that they have energy to work on, we can talk about it. If people are super burnt out, you heard me oh say God. that And I'm sorry, I thought I was on mute. I was like, <laughs> mute. I was just clapping. Yeah, I was like, yes. <laughs> I saw your energy. It was coming through. Apologies. I did not mean to interrupt you. Um, no, that's fine. I was just trying to avoid like, Sometimes I don't want to go to meetings because I said I would do things and then like life is like, mm -mm, no, you're not, Carolyn. You're not doing those things. No, but that's um, exactly what I did when I saw the PR. I was, I clapped, like literally, it was like real time. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm definitely going to start on right now for this hour um, on the community management strategy piece. Um, this is like the advice that we would give to any project that would, that's interested in the whole like, well, who takes care of my people and how do we do this element? Um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start on that. And then I'm also gonna start on a recruiting contributors document, uh, just some like high level stuff. Um, there because there's a lot of resources and then also like all the stuff in our heads um but that's it for me uh i feel very behind on both of those things i won't lie especially because the container d team really needs the community management strategy piece um 
So that's my own personal guilt trip there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we're getting started today. Josh, yeah. what about you? Um, I still have a list of to do's from governance. So mm -hmm. I mainly just dialed in here to keep track of what was going on in contributor growth since well, there's a lot of crossover in the documentation and requirements. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, I know that um, they're not, they weren't able to make it today. Karen and Jennifer, I think we're working on the ladder. Um, but I haven't, haven't seen anything. Um, Josh, did you talk about badges today? That was totally off topic too, by the way. Yeah, if you want, I still haven't done any looking into the um, um, annual assessment due diligence stuff to see what we could glean there because like I said, originally someone else was going to do that. I know, and I was kind of hoping that like Bogdan could, could like come school us on that part. Cause I feel like we're all kind of like batting in the dark. Um, <laughs> but we're all like, this sounds great. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry to get off topic. That just excites the hell out of me out of everything that we're doing on the governance side. I don't know why, but when I saw that, I was like, so anyway, all right, if y'all don't mind, I'm gonna, I guess, oh, well, Carolyn, what about you outside of the, the template? What are what's some of the stuff that you're interested in or you just, you're just focusing on the template right now and, and getting that tightened up? Um, so do you remember the good first issue guide that I wrote for Kubernetes? About yeah. How to curate it? Yeah. Um, so I've been working on that improving it for how to make it maintainable for a maintainer because it asks a lot right nice. and it, i've kind of come up with some improvements what i want to do is take uh what i had there and kind of take some of the other things that jennifer and i have been working on for porter and so putting that up at the cncf level um somewhere um and just open a pr and then i, I don't know like the Google Doc things, I think it's stalled really easy because they get piled on with a lot of things that aren't immediately actionable. Yes. And I think sometimes yeah. it's really hard to move forward because you're like, you said something, but I don't always know what to do with it. Yes. <laughs> and then the doc just kind of is like in this weird limbo. Um, so I want to be a PR girl. <laughs> I just like to open PRs. And if people have comments, I'd love for them to maybe... Uh, make edits instead of comments for some things if we, if we can i think that would help me a lot um, yeah so i encourage people to do that yeah i was thinking a, a very similar because watching your experience and and josh's experience i was thinking the same thing of more like well let me pr the framework of the dock in so people get like where we're gonna go with this yeah and then like we all just kind of collaboratively fill in the holes together. That's where, I, that's kind of what I'm thinking too, just based on like, because it's, it also is just a lot of information to review too. It is. So it's almost like, you know, like giving somebody some large code piece. So it's like, cause you want, like, as I'm a reviewer, like I want to make sure I'm giving you my whole time, you know? So that's why it's like, Oh yeah, let me like let me have an hour. <laughs> so yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think I understood why we originally thought we wanted to do it that way. Yeah, of course. But um, having gone through it, um, I know for me personally, it, it's not it's not working. It makes me feel really um, stuck. Yeah, you know. So I'm gonna try something different. Awesome. Um, I hope people are okay with it. Yeah, oh, so I think here. that's a great yeah. idea. Okay. Um, yeah, because that's exactly what I was going to do today here is like kind of put the framework together for these docs and then put a bunch of to do's and stuff in there. That, that might be good for our crew as well. Yeah. Okay. 
But well, we don't have to keep talking if we just want to take the time back and then work on stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, we can hang out and talk. Like, um, if you want, I mean, that's why I'm here because I just want to see faces and work at the same time. And yeah. that's cool with you. Um, well, I did have one question, actually. It's not related to contributor growth, but for the, um, the, the abstract or whatever, the what is that called? The time slot we asked for, for KubeCon? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got submitted. Yeah. Um, I know we wanted to pre-record it, right? Or were we gonna do, do it live and there's nothing pre-recorded? I couldn't tell if there was gonna be- we, like a Yeah, time. we do not want to pre-record it. Whether or not we will get that option is another question entirely because it only occurred to me after I submitted it that what I submitted will work very poorly as a pre-recorded thing because yeah. what we need to do is we need to find out who's in the audience, right? I'm expecting a small audience for this mm -hmm. because the only appropriate audience are basically project leads for CNCF projects or projects that want to join CNCF. So if we get seven qualified audience members, I'll be pretty happy. Yeah. Um, but then it depends on who those seven are, right? Because if we got seven people who are all from incubating projects, then they need to know a very different set of stuff than seven people who are from projects that are looking to apply for Sandbox. Yep. Um, so we're gonna end up having that conversation with CNCF because they're still using, um, oh, what's the name of the platform? Entrato. Yeah. Which makes it very hard to do anything that's not pre-recorded. Oh, okay. So, so I'll talk to them about it. I guess the question is, if for logistical reasons, they absolutely need to have it pre-recorded, do we want to cancel it? Well, my thing to you is like, <coughs> could you do like a um, some kind of pre-recorded segment part <coughs> and do what we did for steering where it was like live Q&A? Yeah, I mean, well, I guess the question is, can they do a live Q&A? Because the standard Intrato platform is all the questions are asked on Intrato chat, which doesn't really support much in the way of interaction. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I could just take the role then of just like feeding the questions somewhere else for y'all. Like I could just, I don't know, I could be your question hustler. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Oh, so, so when I did KubeCon Europe, a lot of people ask questions in Slack, and then we just repeated them on camera during the live Q and A. They were coming in through multiple channels. Like whatever, we could we could make it work. It's just a would it be optimal situation? <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Uh, whatever you need me to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, I mean, in that case, if we have to pre-record something, what I would envision is like a five to seven minute thing on, you know, here are all the things your project needs to have at the various maturity levels. And then you immediately cut over to the Q&A of, okay, so we're here to help you get those things. Yeah. Um, the, um, uh, pl well, plus we want to put the list of other things that are a good idea to have, even if they're not absolute requirements. The, um, cause like, it's not, I don't think it's a requirement to have a contributor ladder, but oh. if your project is big enough to have multiple levels of contributor, then you ought to have it. The, um, so, um, I think it's worth trying. Let's, yeah. let's just see if we can make it work. You know, okay. um, I want to know if people show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's I honestly my biggest worry. My biggest worry is we get nobody at all, or we only get people who are basically wholly unqualified. You know, like, oh, well, I'm not really affiliated with any project, but. Honestly, yeah. I would, I'm, I'm going to bet, let's, I'm going to bet a dollar. It is Tuesday at 2.15 PM. I'm going to bet a dollar that at least one person from an open source project shows up that isn't even CNCF. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. That, I'm going to say that's, that's okay. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that, that's I'm like, fine with that. <laughs> that's the that's the one bet that I have. I'm gonna put in that one. <laughs> Here's the thing. 
I'm happy to talk to anybody about anything, but we'll just prioritize what's relevant to the talk at hand. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, that's fine. And I think also, I, let's not be afraid to redirect people to the right thing. I mean, we have so many different forums for talking to people who are interested about engaging with the community that the fact that they show up means they're interested. Let's just find the right way to like keep them talking to us in some appropriate fashion. Um, that's all I care about. But I'd rather not just like say it's not going to work and be like, oh, Entrado, let's just give up. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to find these okay. people and engage with them. Yeah. Okay. I'm having a good day today, so I'm being optimistic. Who yeah. knows what I'll say tomorrow? But let's say yeah. yes today. Okay. <laughs> That's how I get myself in trouble. Okay, can I ask you something on a completely different topic? Of course. Um, for governance, I'm currently working on the section of that sort of a summary of here are all the bits of paperwork that your project needs to have in a general sense. Yeah. And I wanted to find out which ones of these somebody in contributor growth was working on. So I can just stub those out and say, link to link to other document here. Sure. Um, presumably general contribution process would be one of those that would be um, either in templates directory or general instruction. When you say general contribution process, right now the contributing guide has um, the pull request life cycle. This is like what it looks like when, but it doesn't have it. It's different for every project. Right. So we have a process that walks people through how to generate right. that. Yes. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly okay. what I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the document that has things like, you know, we expect all PRs to be squash commits. You know, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, um, you know, the, um, you need to sign a CLA. Those, that sort of information. That's in the contributing uh, PR that's in the agenda. Okay. Um, project I communication. I can, I can link it. Okay. Um, I'm planning on okay. doing, a, um, okay. I'm planning on it. Uh, communicate. Oh, excuse me. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me swallow it first. Hold on. communications.md template. Um, yeah. I was going to do one of those as well and we'll obviously collaborate with anyone. Um, is that what you mean by that or did you mean something else? For communications? Yeah. No, I just, um, what I have now is you need to have some place that tells people when your meetings are and what your official channels. Yep. Well, okay. Well, put it, put like a, put like a little placeholder link in there that says yep. link, like template link. Yeah. We, we made the assumption for when I wrote that contributing guide that it was somewhere on the readme and we just kind of like hand waved. If there's an official, like it's always going to be in X document, that'd be helpful. Cause then we could just link to something called, you know, comms.md or, or whatever yeah. it is. Okay. Um, so we already have leadership selection, um, which mm -hmm. Dawn did. Um, contributor promotion is contributor ladder, um, which you guys have. Um, um, this is getting into sort of steadily more advanced paperwork, depending on the maturity and size of the project. Yeah. Um, release process. That would be helpful, honestly. Um, yeah. I okay. feel like, and I feel like, because I feel like most engineers always want to mold it into their engineering org, which is fine, honestly. I mean, that's what they know, right? Um, yeah. But like for me, like a best practices and like a who, who, who can guide you and like, I think that would be very helpful, honestly. Yeah. Okay. So that's one that we need to generate. Yeah. Um, and well, and one of the, I mean, honestly, my main point in that is whatever your release process is, it should be written down. Yep. Which is for yep. two reasons. One is for managing expectations. And the second reason is, you know, people leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot tell you the number of projects I have been on where, you know, release X was delayed for six months because nobody knew how to build the packages. So. Yeah, do you want that to be under contributor growth? Is just one of the template things we had? 
I yeah um the um I don't have strong opinions. I mean yeah, eventually I I mean I think the templates should be the templates. The templates aren't really contributor growth is writing more of the templates, but the templates aren't like a specific working group. You follow me? Yep, that's fine. Because like we're going to be writing templates for these purely governance things like leadership selection. Um, the um, so, um, but also I want for each one of these I want some narrative in a template. If you follow me, right? And the narrative says things like this is why you need this document, mm -hmm. right? Or this is why you need this template, right? And or in the case of some of these more advanced things, this is how big you are when you need this. Um, the um, because um, so some of them like I. Uh, project trademark advice really you only care about if your project has reached the point of getting commercial adoption. Um, the um, That's the point where you have to assign somebody to work with the CNCF on what your trademark policy is going to be and all those other things. So um, you just reminded me of something. Um, yeah. You know, it would be a really interesting tie into that. Um, because a lot of projects just still don't even understand the CNCF services. Mm -hmm. So I'm almost even wondering if in some of the templates, we could indicate some of the services, you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, reach out to CNCF for XYZ thing. You know what I mean? Like a mediator. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, don't I just know how that would go yeah, I don't know how that would go into a template. I'm planning to put this in a lot of the narrative, right? Oh, right. Because I'm just like, like, because like a template could be like, you know, one step, talk to CNCF about XYZ thing. You know, they can help you with this. You know, number two, you know, do XY, like that kind of thing. So I think that's where people get lost with the like, where CNCF can come in because they can actually come in everywhere, it seems like in like, but in weird ways and like, they'll only do so much and like, I mean, and I don't mean this in any negative way, by the way, by recording. Um, so okay. I, like, that's, I, I guess that's just what I hear a lot of. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, going through the onboarding process right now. Yep. And like, so Amy made me an issue. This seems to be pretty standard. And yep. she goes through like pretty exhaustively, like everything that needs to happen all the documents, how trademark works, what are all the services that CNCF offers, how to switch And that's all ID. new and awesome. So yeah. And so it's like, I mean, obviously after our SIG has created more content, we'll be more involved in this and it'll restart referencing our templates. But I don't know, like this, this has actually been incredibly helpful. Yeah. yeah. In understanding what projects there are and what they can offer and like I already have paid Netlify and a whole bunch of other things happening for me. Oh, nice. Um, really fast. I mean, yeah. it's been a week. Um, nice. I don't know. So I, do you think we need more things to talk about like the CNCF or? No, 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 no. I'm just saying like in areas where we can highlight or should highlight, like we can, like even in like, you know, the, like the recruiting contributors doc, like, people don't know that, you know, they'll pay for certain like services or, or whatnot, um, or even contractors in certain cases. So it's just kind of like, just in, in, informing them of, hey, talk to, you know, don't forget to talk to, you know, Amy or your CNCF rep um, about what they could do for you or something like that. That's all. Um, nothing like, nothing like programmatically or anything like that. Do we want to put that maybe in the, um, like one of our advisory things, not in the template, but in the advisory, like, uh, guidance docs, maybe that just talk about like, if you haven't onboarded in a while or you weren't part of the onboarding and now you're a maintainer, here's a refresher course. Yep. Um, I, I think that actually makes a lot of sense because like I'm planning to put the things into the individual sections where they make sense. But it would be super useful to also have, hey, here's this list of things that CNCF does, yeah. you know, and here's a link to the current course on CNCF services. Yep. Yeah, this is this is the magical page. I love this page. Yeah. yeah. So. And well, hilarious enough is 
the older projects didn't get that. So it's like, okay. like even like Helm Crew and stuff like that. Like this is all so new. So that's why I'm like, because then I feel like some of those folks are going to read this, um, like read this documentation. So that's why it's cool if it's like, hey, by the way, this is also now a, like a service of CNCF or something. Like where we can, I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that we're pushing that. It's just if there's if there's ever any point in like our templates or whatever where we can like say, hey, there's extra hands for you. I just think we should do it. That's all. Especially with the ambiguous stuff. I'm just talking as I write. <laughs> okay. I'm a little unsure where to put that. Do you want me to make an issue for this maybe? No. Yeah, it would it would go in wherever our top level advisory folder is. Um, do we know yet where stuff is going to go once it's approved material? Uh, in the project template repo, if it's uh, a template. What about narrative stuff? Um, I guess that, I guess that would be our repo. Yeah, I guess, it, or I was going to say, or it could still go in there under like a narr under a like a guidelines folder. Um, guidelines and advice. Understanding. So the, the template repo is supposed to be like Porter, somebody who's like brand new, wants to make something that's destined for the CNCF or they just want to follow CNCF recommended guidelines, right? They could clone this repo and hopefully not be deleting a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't belong in their repo going forward, right? They shouldn't be carrying around copies of our docs essentially. So the templates make sense. They edit and they're it's theirs forever, right? Like the contributing guide, the governance, the ladder, owner, code owners, owner's files, all that kind of stuff. But like our guidance docs that they're not going to edit and have nothing to do with their project. And it's really just our content. I would really recommend we keep it in our repo. I, yeah, well, so, you know what? I should take this to the general contributor strategy meeting because um, I kind of feel like there needs to be an approval process because a lot of these guidance docs are kind of works in progress and at least within governance, we're about to get into guidance docs that have to do with CNCF requirements. Yeah. And those really need to be approved by someone on the TOC before projects start taking them as guidance. Um, but but I'll I'll add that to the agenda of the next general contrib stat meeting because there aren't enough people. I guess here. it'll be better when we have some examples to play with. Um, like I guess is the I guess is the governance doc ready for like people at TOC to give blessings kind of deal? No, we've we've we actually have not touched the requirement stuff yet. All right. Um, um, yeah, I guess like let's just see what it looks like, like what one looks like live in action. That's my take anyway. Mm -hmm. Don't you have a draft? You have that draft folder, right? Yeah, we have. Well, we have drafts of some things, but they're all actually Google Docs right now. Oh um, no, you have a folder in our repo called Draft. Oh. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in it though because everything's in the Google Docs. Oh, okay. The. Um, Wait. I always kind of expected we would we would indicate to people that stuff in the draft folder in our repo yeah. was oh and then and then just move that. it into a yeah just move it into the requirements folder when it's not a draft anymore yeah yeah that would actually help us with the whole idea of um, you know what Carolyn's saying of just PR and iterate if we could just PR it into a drafts folder because then the intention is clearly a draft. And then it would just like the PR would land and then I could, you know, then we could collaborate on it. I don't know. Uh, yeah. And, and then when we're ready for something really official that matters when we're trying to represent it is these are the requirements. We yeah. can do a PR that essentially just moves the file and then we can get whatever we need to put a green check mark on it. That sounds like a good idea. Um, Cause then it's, then our PRs can move a lot faster too. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it could just be like one reviewer and they would be like, okay, cool. This could go in the drafts, you know?
just making that issue about uh, catching people up on what the CNCF can help with for people who missed the latest onboarding materials. Josh, was that all the content you wanted to run past us? Is who's who's working on which? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that the things that I thought were going to come out of contributor growth were in fact coming out of contributor growth. So Okay. Um, I added the release management to my content tracking issue. Oh yeah? Okay. Is that okay. Okay, I'll put that down as yours then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The um yeah, and we've got a couple of other, like the project trademark interface and then also conformance requirements, because if the project starts participating in conformance testing with the CNCF, somebody from the project side needs to handle that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and if there's multiple companies sponsoring the project, then they need to have some sort of governance process for that. Yeah, makes sense. It can get contentious. As I know, in fact, having spent this morning in a meeting specifically on that topic that ran an hour overtime. So it's fun to be going through this process right now as we speak and mm -hmm. definitely seeing how this all really happens. Um, yeah, well, I've ended up adding a lot of these things because I've been going through this with projects and seeing all the bits that I'm having to write on a one off basis for all these projects. And I'm like, okay. Oh I had to write a governance.md file for my project. Yep. <laughs> and I was, I immediately went to our templates directory, like, do we have one yet? <laughs> no. The, um, yeah, sorry, we just, we started on the advice end of things. Yeah. And have been getting that knocked out rather than, than on the template end of things. And the governance, the governance template's going to be complicated because basically, we're going to have like six different ones for the six major sort of governance structures. Mm -hmm. um, because there's no way to genericize it between one project that might be, yeah. you know, the most common type, which is what we call uh, foundry leader, where the people who created the project are also the current leadership. Yeah. Um, I, you know, all the way up to projects that have actual formal elections. Well, we decided to just write down what we do right now yeah. and then as a group uh, evaluate and improve um, yeah. later. So I'm going to steal your, your stuff once you're finished. <laughs> That's basically what I decided when I realized I couldn't take it right now. Yeah. Yeah. The, um... Not steal. Be one of your first users of your template. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll skip to that because honestly, it feels like a template would actually be easier to knock out for that. Um, as soon as you write one, I'll use it. Yeah. Well, so it's not with the only what, one. There are yeah. new people on the CNCF. All uh, the time. Was it every month, every two All months? All the time, yeah. 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 If, if anything, it's accelerated. Um, and they're asking yep. people in sandbox to write a governance, even though it's not required. Yeah. Yep. So. Well, I'm in favor of that anyway, right? Because it helps sure. with contrib it helps with contributors. If nothing else, like even if the contributors don't give a fig about leadership, they do want to know, hey, who do I ping about reviewing my PR? That's in my contributing guide. 
Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, my, my point was just that um, mm -hmm. it increases how many people are going to be looking for a governance template. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So. Well, that, that's all I have. Unless anyone else has something. No, we had an equally short governance meeting this morning because people have been. I'm nervous as soon as I hang up, I'm, I'm going to stop writing this and then I'm going to go into some other holes. So that's why I'm like, I'm staying on the line because I'm still writing in my hack MD. You know, that's why I'm like. <laughs> Are we giving you like that study group vibe? Like, yeah, that's why I'm productive yeah. as long as you're in the library with us. That's why I was so Jones to come today. I was like, I don't really have much of an update. Like, should I just not go and like, you know, put my tail behind my legs? And then like, I was like, no, you're going to go and actually write something like <laughs> you're gonna go into detention and get something done <laughs> what we're not detention we're the cool study group we yeah. get in the library come on <laughs> ah, that's good that's good uh, i don't know i don't i don't have any more though i have to i have to write my talk though because they want me to record it what talk Thursday? Um, I have you heard of Kubernetes Virtual Summit? No. Of <laughs> it. Um, I don't know. They they uh, asked me to speak at it about whatever I wanted to, and so I'm like, well, no one lets me talk about CNAV and Porter, so. Okay. I I'm like I'm writing the talk in a week. <laughs> oh, this is the DevOps.com people. Yeah, it is. I'm really surprised nobody hit me up about this because. Josh is like, I'm a celebrity. And no, I'm... no, no. It's more. It's because Red Hat. <laughs> it's because Red. It's because Red Hat advertises with DevOps.com. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm. That's why I'm surprised nobody hit me up about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a newer conference. Um, I think did they start last year? I want to say. Um. I don't know, but I was excited to get a chance to do this talk because I submitted it a couple times to, you know, KubeCon, but I mean, there's so many talks, right? Um, oh, but this would have been the year to submit. I we, submitted we had like, we had literally a third the number of submissions for KubeCon November that I we had to San Diego. <laughs> Why well, are you not in either of my tracks? Oh, okay. I don't know. I just couldn't get motivated to submit. I still, honestly, even though we, I have even more to talk about, I still, in my head, I'm like, yeah, it's all I, cloudy. I actually have not submitted any non-maintainer sessions because, um, you know, one of my various jobs for Red Hat is shepherding all of the Red Hatter submissions. And so by the time I'm done with that, I'm like, I don't want to look at another talk proposal. I absolutely don't. Yeah. Plus, yeah. plus, most likely, I would submit in my own tracks, which means I then have to reject the talk because you can't pick your own talk. So, oh, see, I don't run a whole track. I just do like the pre-filter where I help rate stuff, but I don't actually get to pick the final yeah. talk. So, that's yeah. not a problem for me. I've I've ended up with alternately performance and storage depending on the KubeCon. So I'm all over the place. I do operability, community, app dev, you know. I but. didn't see your talk at uh, the open source conference, Josh. How did it go? Oh, it was fun. Um, I need to find out if they put the videos for those up anywhere. Yeah. I don't think I the videos are up yet. The, um... And it was it was actually particularly good because I was back to back with um, Henrik from MySQL, so the um... No idea, it doesn't say anything about videos. So 
it should ping somebody. I mean, they were definitely struggling with technology, so it may just be that they have not put the videos up yet. Did you pre-record your video or did yeah. you? Yeah, in which case, right, like if that's gonna be stalled for some reason, I can just put it up myself. There you go. The pre-recording thing is just so weird because, you know, it's weird to be a case of, I'm used to like the night before the talk, I don't do anything because I'm rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And um, and now I'm like, I did all that three weeks ago. I'm just showing up for the Q and A. It's odd. So the, um... They're having me record the talk in front of them. So that I'll have a little audience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, that I would, would be nice. So much would... better without it. Oh, see, I do so much better with an audience. Like one of the things they were like, um, you know, can you do the little inset video thing? And I'm like, well, I really actually can't because I can't do this talk unless I get up and walk around. Yeah. I might actually buy this little camera tracking thing. They make this device for people who do sports that automatically tracks you. Oh yeah. The um. But I didn't I for that one. If I, if I got up, I would, I would pace. I'm a big mover when I get on the stage. I don't know. I've been in my house. There's not a lot of place to walk. <laughs> no. See, we've got, um, you know, because I have the cordless headset, right? And then we've got, um, my office is down in what we call the rumpus room, mm -hmm. which is the converted basement, which is mostly one giant space. So. Oh, I've got like two no, one foot in either direction. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a lot more like being up, on a though. small stage behind the podium. No, they want me to stand up. I'm just going to do like a little tight cheer. You know what I mean? Like, this is how much <laughs> I have. So it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of energy in a very tight little yeah. Maryland square. It'll be fun. I always have to do that at conferences. I always have to talk to, like, if it's being filmed. I have to talk yeah. to the cameraman before then and find out where the edges of oh, yeah. the film are because otherwise I will totally cross them. Well, I'm like doing like gymnastics on the stage. I'm like crouching down and like moving around. And I, I don't know. I've got too much nervous energy. <laughs> I miss being able to do workshops with visual aids. I did one on Postgres replication once that involved bungee cords, playing cards, and silly hats. Aw, that would have been fun to go to. It was fun, and I think it really helped people understand how it was supposed to work. This is back when Postgres replication was new, and people mm -hmm. really didn't understand the mechanism, right? And so the hats showed whether you were currently um, the primary or a replica, and the, um, the bungee cords were network connections between the nodes, and the playing cards were, um, we were passing around disc blocks. Mm -hmm. The, um, and it got people out of their seats, so. That's one of the hardest things to do, is get people to talk and actually get out of their chair. Yeah. That's one of the things I always wonder about these online talks is, okay, how many of the people who are logged in are actually listening to this? And how Not many people- Not in another tab? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. The, um, I mean, because you always know, I mean, you know, when you're giving a talk live, right, you've got that certain crew who are in the back three rows reading their email. And, and they're only in your talk because they were in that room for the last talk and they don't want to be bothered to get up. Um, the, um, but with online, it's worse, right? Because somebody could have turned off the sound. They could have put their headset down and gone to lunch. You wouldn't know. It doesn't, it doesn't affect you if they're doing that. So you can't let it, I can't let that bother me, right? If they're streaming me and not listening. Yeah. It, it ultimately doesn't hurt me at all, you know? So again, I'm always looking just to have a conversation with someone. Like that's what these talks are for. So if I get someone to stick around and they'll chat with me afterwards or a week later, they'll show up and they want to 
ask a question or try something out or like, you know, whatever, engage with you in some way, then that, that made the talk worth it because it was fun, you know? Yeah. That's why I do it. I just did to lure people in. <laughs> the, um, oh, that reminds me, I do need to do a write up for um, uh, Nancy about, you know, some small things that we could maybe do to improve things like, it would be really useful if the moderator knew how many people we had in the audience. Yeah. Which is not something we actually know because um, one of the talks I was at, you know, the answer was like five. And oh. um, which we found out during the Q&A when there were no questions. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'd known that in advance, I would have actually seeded some questions. Oh, definitely. The, um, I went to uh, DevOps Day Chicago, and they ran yeah. it on a different platform. Did you go, or no? Okay, they did. They did a different platform. They did um, oh, what's it called? Discord, I think. Um, so there was like breakout rooms for or channels or whatever for every single speaker. Um, I really like that. It, it'd be nice if KubeCon could do that as well. It was awkward when we wanted to chat in Slack afterwards. From a, for a talk because like there is a channel in slack for every track and like the community track was getting overwhelmed and it was really hard to be like no i want to speak about this topic with people no one seemed to understand threads because slack <laughs> and um it was hard to engage with people about the talk after the talk you know what i mean mm -hmm. And it, and it worked better when there was pre-created little places where you could talk for an hour or two after the talk was over, actually, and still get the speaker um, and get other people who were who were keen to talk about. Uh, I think we were talking about like uh, build, uh, community building in, uh, for what was it DevOps days in Brazil. I was pestering that speaker for like an hour, <laughs> um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Whereas you can't really have that sustained level of engagement with somebody even for like two minutes after their talk because the net talk has started and and like three other talks finished in that track and everyone's talking over each other in Slack. Um, and you're all trying to share the same channel, which is hard. I've seen all kinds of different things because we had um, four, um, um, open source summit for Linux Foundation Open Source Summit, um, the community track channel ended up being its own thing. Yeah. It ended up being like this running discussion from community managers about stuff that was going on and that was only tangentially related to any of the talks that were being given. Yeah. Um, down to the point where a lot of the speakers ended up using threading in order to keep the stuff for their talks separate. Um, the, um, but in, for KubeCon, the, the, the CNCF Slack channels were pretty dead. Um, and I think that's mostly because if a Kubernetes or related, you know, geek wants to chat with people on Slack, they already have their own Slack. Exactly. Oh my gosh, y'all, I forgot. Um, let me share my screen with you. I want to get your take on this document. Okay. Um, and it's nothing that I was just talking about either. <laughs> the whole other half-baked document. Um, I have several of those these days. Um, I never thought I was going to be that person until I was. So um, here it is. Hold on. Share my screen. This is a meta thing. Um, I think that's okay. Share. You all see this hack MD? Yeah. So this is what I was thinking about. I really think that CNCF should rename SIGs. Um, I think it's like a thorn and um, I know naming is hard. And so I think that's fine. Uh, I think it's okay to revisit words. Um, 
I think that there's some better things here. Um, better being um, like cabinet advisory council working groups. Um, so anyway, that's obviously you're seeing this for the first time. So obviously you've never seen this. So you might not even have a comment on it. But it's something that I've been thinking about at like a meta level. And I told Liz about it in a off comment that wasn't even like related in a hallway hallway combo kind of thing. Um, Cause like, it seems like SIGs have a hard time recruiting contributors. They always wanna know what they own. Um, always think it's a Kubernetes SIG. Um, just, general confusion, I think. And it's kind of like, I know what they're trying to do, right? Like a, we know, um, but it's kind of like, I look at the TOC, like the president of the United States, even though it's multiple people, but it's like that kind of president role. And then each one of us is kind of like the cabinet because we're advising that council in our areas of specialty, right? Um, so does that make us the Department of Labor? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> or the, de the Department of Health and Human Services, or the Department of Energy, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. <laughs> hey, Paris, I know yeah. you don't have one of the most common names out there, which is committee. Was that on purpose? Well, just I, because I didn't want to be, I didn't want it to be double committees because so we've got technical oversight committee. That was my only concern because then it would be, because we technically report into them. So then it would be parent reporting into parent. But I'll write, I'll, I'll write that as well. Is this just for CNCF? Yes. Okay. This is just for CNCF. Yeah. This is a like, my intention with this is a meta proposal to the TOC to change their SIGs. Um, so instead of contributor strategy, we would either be like, uh, we would be the advisory council for governance and contributor strategy. We would be the governance and contributor strategy working group, or we would be the, the governance and contributor strategy committee or the governance and contributor strategy cabinet. Um, something that indicates to other contributors that these people, these bodies are doing advisory work instead of like, you know, the actual operational work, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like it provides more of a purpose and a mission, whereas like SIG and other projects always refers to sort of like a shared ownership and common and commonality around this one thing that you're going to get work done in. We're sure that's us, but we're also more of like consulting and advising and like giving our experience, which is more of like advisory, even though we're like doing work too, obviously we're making things, but that's the, the, the artifacts that we're making are still like advisory, right? Yeah. Uh, and I know some of the other CNCF SIGs have had issues with like just recruiting people for their causes and like people think like, you know, in, in the case of like a SIG strategy, people think it's SIG strategy for Kubernetes and then you own the, the security process for Kubernetes, for instance. Um, so anyway, this is just something meta that has been literally in my folder for months. I'm not kidding you. Uh, <laughs> months that I have yet to ship that I also am like, wow, I'm blocking myself at this point. But um, this is, if you all had, I just, I just wanted to show it to you all because it's like, if you have any thoughts or anything, I would love to hear them. Um, so that's really it. I mean, I agree SIG is confusing because we aren't quite a SIG and no one knows what that means. Yes. My, I'm going to say, my only problem with it is the fact that a bunch of them have the same name as Kubernetes SIGs. And I cannot tell you the number of times I've had the conversation of SIG networking, 
So is that the Kubernetes SIG networking or the CNCF SIG networking? Yes. What yeah. time? Oh, there's a difference? You yes. always have to say CNCF SIG. Yes. <laughs> it makes it even more of a mouthful. Yes. And that's why I mean. like, that's all a part of it. That's what I mean. It's just like, there's, we, can, we can make it a little bit better here. Yeah. I like the idea of looking to what we use in other bodies, like what we call it in government or other areas, because maybe there's a fit that people would recognize in other domains. I'm all ears. That's why I went for community. I guess I just wanted to report into the team. What'd you say, Carolyn? I'm sorry. I said that's why I suggested committee before I yeah, forgot yeah. that we report into the TOC. Yeah. yeah that's technically our governance because like our first and foremost is to like help them figure things out ultimately. Um, Advisory council is a good name though. I think that was on your list. I would say that when I've invited people to contribute to this with me, it has, people's hesitation has had less to do with the name SIGBO and, and more to do with, um, people are interested to contribute to Kubernetes because they perceive a value to like their resume and network to be associated with Kubernetes that they don't feel they get just being associated with CNCF. Yeah. Well, I guess it's more of a sell of like, well, you would be, you would have multiple project names on your resume of projects that you would help versus just one. But trust me, of all people, I understand that need as well. So I like trying to tap their inner desire to control things. <laughs> Which includes Kubernetes, um, but yeah, sometimes I don't know. I don't know how much the name has to do with the numbers of how many people actually end up being involved. Is all that was the point of my comment? Was yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if the name really correlates to the numbers, really. Look at us using the whole hour. Yay! And I actually like have the start of two docs and I think like by the end of this week I'll be able to PR something into a drafts. Yay! Awesome. Yay! Tell us. Thanks y'all. I miss hanging out in real life. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Josh is here. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, like, it's this Friday is Rosh Hashanah, and we're going to have one person over. Oh. So. Well, I'll hang out with you on a Zoom if you want to pop me open. <laughs> well, actually, no. it's no, no. Oh, no, but we're not, we're not observant, so. Okay. The, um... I was going to say no internet. Okay. Yeah. But the problem is that we'll be eating, like, challah and stuff in front of you, and you won't have any. I'll live through you. I'll live vicariously through you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. Bye.